Hello everyone and thanks for attending today's webcast, Bring Testing Metrics into Light with Code Coverage in SonarCube. We are extremely pleased to have as our speakers today CompuWare Solution Consultant Roland Kinsman and Account Consultant Terry Capriati. We also have on hand Steve Kanza, who is assisting with questions, so please make sure to submit your questions via the Q&A widget. With that, I'd now like to welcome and hand things over to Terry. Thank you, Janet. I have two real quick, um, more housekeeping, housekeeping items. First, um, I apologize for the rescheduling, and I thank you all for being able to attend today. And second, I am from the Northeast, which means I tend to talk fast. So if I'm going too fast, just send Janet a message and she'll you know, slow me down. So I was going to start with a joke, but I talked myself out of it. What if you didn't find it funny? What if I offended somebody? What if? What if is a powerful question, one that I get, I get asked often, especially when my son wants something. What if I, you give me $20 and I'll mow the lawn later? But what if? But what if you could deliver code faster? What if you can measure code quality? What if you could deliver qu better quality code? What if you could do both, quality and speed? Being able to deliver code faster. What if higher quality code is, uh, being able to deliver faster, higher quality code would be a positive impact to any business, especially in this rapidly changing world. So IT needs to deliver competitive innovation faster with higher quality for all applications across all platforms. Remember, faster beats bigger in today's ever-changing world. Software development isn't normally viewed as a product. Therefore, the software development life cycle is rarely thought of in manufacturing terms. Manufacturing processes have long been under scrutiny to look for even small improvements to streamline the build process of whatever is being manufactured, and they've always been very quality control centric. Think Six Sigma, Black Belt. If we start viewing software as a manufacturer product, shouldn't it then be under the same scrutiny for improvements? Great improvements have been made in software manufacturing with agile methods and the drive to a CI-CD pipeline and full DevOps processes, but can only confirm the improvements are made by measuring data on quality and throughput. Now, what if my question isn't what if, but how? How do we collect data? How do we measure, report, and ultimately improve quality? How do we present this data in an easily consumable format? How does this fit into our CI CD pipeline? As many what ifs that are asked, there are that many hows. So how do I start delivering faster, cleaner code? Well, the easy or short answer to that question is automation. To create, to create a continuous integration, continuous delivery, aka CI CD pipeline, that isn't a hodgepodge of manual steps. Automation is going to address the faster and it also includes the metrics which is needed to address the higher quality. So automation is the key. Automation of the unit testing, automation of the collection of metrics, automation of the inclusion of the quality data for reporting. Using automation to drive your CI CD pipeline from development to deployment. That is why we have introduced the integration of code coverage with Topaz for Total Test and SonarCube, all driven by Jenkins. Used by developers or testers in their day-to-day -day work and by managers for reviewing the quality metrics, the process is capture the unit test in Topaz for Total Test before making the coding changes. After modifying the code, Jenkins would kick off the process to tell ISPW to do a promotion of the, un of the change code. Stage code coverage to capture the quality metrics as you're running the Topaz for Total Test unit tests, which now are collecting that code coverage data. And then feed that data into SonarCube for analysis and reporting. If SonarCube passes the changes according to quality thresholds established by your company, the code is ready for deployment when that is required. Sounds great, doesn't it? But how do you get started? I told you there would be more how questions. 
So to answer that, Hal, is build a CIDC pipeline that is built on best of breed solutions. At the core is the CompuWare technology stack. Topaz Workbench, Topaz Total Test, coupled with Expediter and Expediter Code Coverage for unit testing and metric generation. Then using Jenkins as the orchestration layer and SonarQ for analysis. This gives you the foundation and tools you need to automate your CICD pipeline. Now let's get a little bit more granular. So here's a process flow that developers that are focused on creating tests and making changes, but leaving the promotion, integration, testing, and quality gate validation to an automated process. This frees the developers time to make more code changes and deliver more to the business more quickly while being sure the quality standards are being met. So just do a little quick, real quick look at this diagram. And at the top, we have the tools that are used for source control testing, analysis, and deployment. At the bottom, we have Jenkins. It's the underlying orchestration layer. It controls the automation. In the middle, the green check boxes, we have the flow of the pipeline. On the left, we have, we have Jenkins triggering the execution of your Topaz total test scripts that are running expert code coverage and collecting your metrics. And on the right, we have Jenkins triggering SonarCube to analyze the data and collecting it, including the Topaz for total test pass fail results, results and code cover metrics. After Stonar Cube completes the analysis, Jenkins will call the quality gate, which will check one or more values in Stonar Cube and compare those to the thresholds you've established. If the thresholds have been met, the quality gate returns a go to Jenkins, which then continues your CI CD pipeline, or it's not, it'll send back a no-go and Jenkins will stop the process. All of this looks great on paper, but I'm sure you'd like to see how it works. So I'm going to turn it over to Roland to take control and give you a quick demonstration. He'll be walking you through the process. Roland, it's all yours. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Hmm. Okay, so as Terry mentioned, we push the results of our testing into Sonar Cube, and this is what it looks like. We can automate the quality gate. And you can see here in the quality gate that these, in this particular test that we ran and pushed into Sonar Cube, that the quality gate was passed. Here is an example right here of a quality gate in Sonar Cube. And as you can see, we can specify um, here under co coverage exactly how much cover coverage we require to pass the quality gate. If we click on add condition, there are several different categories of coverage that we can specify for our quality gate. I'm going to cancel out of there. Now let's look at the test results focusing on code coverage. So if we go back, actually, if we go back to our pipeline, um, we can see we've uh, got several categories including code coverage. Now if we click on the code coverage area, you can see we ran um, we had three programs in our test. As it turns out, um, CWXT Cobb, this one with 70% coverage, was the unit test that we ran in our test. CWXT Sub C and CWXT Date actually did not execute. Um, the Topaz for Total Test stubbed out those programs and just sent the results back to CWXT Cobb uh, to run. And we can bring up the code for CWXT Cobb if we go here. And we're in the procedure division. Sonar marks the covered code with green bars and the uncovered code with red bars. So you can see we have um, 
a lot of code that was covered and a lot of code um, that was not. And in this listing, it also shows um, what are called in sonar cubes uh, code smells and bugs. So let's so now let's back up and show how we got here. I'm going to go into Topaz, and I'm starting in the expediter perspective, and I'm going to run an expediter de expediter debug configuration. And what we can do in Expediter is generate the unit test. All we have to do is right click and choose generate unit test and it brings up a dialog we, and uh, the unit Topaz for Total Test generates a, an Eclipse project. So then after we run our test, we'll go ahead and run that to the end. We end up with an Eclipse project. Let me go into my project view here. And you'll see this is the unit test project, the CWXT Cobb uh, underscore RJK1. That happens to be the application ID. So by creating a specific unit test in Topaz for Total Test, we create a consistent repeatable unit test so that every time we change the code, we run the same unit test to make sure we haven't broken anything. And then what we do is we push that code into a GitHub repository and that allows it to have to be accessed from Jenkins. So we, we can run our test using Jenkins. We go back to our browser. We have a test here in Jenkins, and I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. I'm going to go to the full stage view. And so the first thing our Jenkins pipeline does is download the tests from GitHub. Those are the very tests that we pushed out to GitHub using uh, Eclipse. And then it executes the unit tests on the mainframe, pulls the code coverage back down into uh, Jenkins and pushes it out to uh, SonarCube. SonarCube does the analysis and it checks the quality gate. So in this particular case, it looks like the quality gate failed. So now we can go back to SonarCube Um, and find out what happened. So our quality gate failed and it looks like we did not get any code coverage at all. So we've got a problem with our test. We're going to have to figure out um, why we didn't get any code coverage. But that's uh, the general idea. Uh, the idea is that Jenkins drives the process to run the tests and push them into SonarCube. With that, um, back to Terry. Hey, Roland, before we, you know, switch over back to me, I just have a, one or two quick questions. So are you limited to the number of steps or stages in your CICD pipeline, you know, that, that whole, the green arrow type thing? Um, and, you know, what's the longest you've seen? Um, I've seen up to nine or ten stages in the Jenkins uh, pipeline, but uh, there's no particular limit. You can have Jenkins do as many uh, tasks as you need it to do to automate your CI/CD pipeline. Great. And then, you know, I'm curious, how do you, you know, how do the Jenkins scripts, how do they get set up? Okay. Um, well, what you do in Jenkins is using the uh, code coverage plugin, you will generate the syntax and put it into your Jenkins pipeline. So if I go to configure, I'll show how we got that code um, into our pipeline. And um, here is my uh, pipeline code. And if I scroll down to pipeline syntax, and click on this drop down here, 
and go to general build step and then uh, Topaz for total test. One of the things I can do in Topaz for total test is add code coverage information. And that will specify, actually you will specify a mainframe data set here for the code coverage repository and a system name and a test ID. And once you have filled in all of the specifications, you would click on generate pipeline script and, that, and then you would select that generated code and paste it into your pipeline. Okay, Terry? Thank you so much, Roland. So um, as Roland, just wanna make sure everybody um, knows to minimize your media player. So um, as Roland showed you during the demo, you can have more than three steps in your pipeline. And while today's discussion is specifically around code coverage and SonarCube, Jenkins and SonarCube can be used throughout your entire CI CD pipeline. So here's just an example of a real world DevOps tool chain. Um, you see Jenkins in the middle and, and there's lots of things that are feeding it and a lot of things it's, it, it's feeding. I know we've mentioned code coverage in Toto Pez for total test often. Remember, you need a way to capture the metrics to feed into Sonar to determine quality. As you can see, by measuring what has happened, by capturing metrics, it is possible to quantify the work towards quality thresholds, just like production lines and manufacturing have done for years. Using automation lets you do it faster, repeatable. As for, and for those familiar with the advisor, we at CompuMirror believe that data, metrics, and automation are integral to faster, cleaner development. So to recap, Using Jenkins as the orchestration layer, along with Topaz for total test and code coverage, dramatically increases the ability to automate much of the production line, thus realizing an improved speed to delivery by reducing the manual intervention, increasing the quality of applications by ensuring the quality is measured and managed, regardless of plat platform. For CompuWare, this is a unique differentiator, as no one else is providing this level of code coverage data to SonarCube to enable the automation of software production line. And as we build this on top of the information we've already gathered and sent to SonarCube from other sources, it's used to support decision, IT decision making. So, improves speed delivery, ensures quality across platforms. So in summary, this all drives an organization further towards continuous integration and delivery through more automation, automated and consistent testing, and then quality measurements. Poor quality should be trapped earlier in the development process and never get to promotion. This is shifting left. So in order to shift left, you need to better manage the software manufacturing process. And you cannot measure, you cannot manage what you do not measure. So the first question I have is, how do we interface between the mainframe and Git? So this is uh, Steve Kanza. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what Roland showed and then uh, talk about how CompuWare views uh, mainframe source code. So what Roland showed was the storage of a total test project, which is a, a set of distributed files in, uh, in GitHub. So that's the aspect that he showed integrating with Git and um, that can be used as a central place, as he said, to store uh, distributed assets such as total assets in a distributed SCM. What CompuWare recommends for mainframe source code management is that that still resides on the mainframe. Uh, CompuWare provides a solution, ISPW, which is a mainframe resident SCM and it handles the SCM source code management aspects as well as the compilation, the build process of mainframe resident applications and also deals with the deployment aspects and all that can be integrated into tools like Jenkins and integrated with SonarCube to uh, provide a very modern 
approach to mainframe source code management. So we, we do recommend solutions that are best of breed uh, for various aspects of your, um, your DevOps pipeline. And in our opinion, ISPW is best of breed for mainframe source code management uh, in mainframe resident applications and Git provides uh, best of breed for distributed assets. So thanks, Steve. The next question is, can you tell SonarCube to ignore call programs that will be stubbed in the test case so it does not affect your overall code coverage metrics? Yeah, there, there are a variety of different ways to uh, do this within SonarCube. Um, at the, you know, the most direct way um, would be to pass in exclusion filters into what's getting scanned in the SonarCube. Um, so that can allow you to exclude uh, programs that you don't want uh, the metrics reported on, uh, which would be the case in a, a case of a stub program. Um, so there are other uh, different ways to do that, and um, I don't think we have time to go into all the different approaches within this call, but certainly something um, if you're interested in more information, we can, uh, we can follow up. Does Topaz for Total Test store unit test cases directly into Git repositories? Yeah, so I, I, I kind of touched on this in my other answer, but, um, you know, again, with, uh, with Topaz for Total Test, uh, with an Eclipse project that can be uh, connected to uh, an SEM such as uh, Git, Bit, um, Bitbucket, et cetera, and then you can work within Eclipse and push those assets into GitHub, which is what Roland had demonstrated. Do you have to have Topaz for total test, or can you gather metrics and feed them into code coverage, I mean, into SonarCube if you only have code coverage? Mm -hmm. Can you answer that? Uh, I can also take a stab at answering that. So um, total test isn't required to feed code coverage metrics into SonarCube, um, but you do need some method to actually drive uh, the applications in a very repeatable fashion in order to, to have quality metrics of your code coverage. Um, so the best way to do that, we feel, is with a tool like total test that provides a, a great capability to run, run the programs, run them with repeatable, uh, very easy to modify data um, output so you, you can have a very repeatable test environment. And that's very important for code coverage because if, um, if you're, you're capturing code coverage metrics based off of manual testing, um, your, your results will be um, really dependent on how good that manual testing is. I want to add to that answer a little bit um, from a QA perspective. It, when you when you want to when you want to test, you want to make sure you've hit all the code that's been changed using code coverage, as we showed in the process before. You actually can identify the records that are going to hit your lines of code, so that when you then run your Topaz for Total Test unit case. You're not bringing full volumes through. You're not, um, you know, just, you know, throwing data at it, hoping that you're going to hit everything. So the combination of the two is going to almost help you assure that you're hitting the lines of code that you need to hit. So that's just my QA background. So next question: Is there specific versions of the CompuWare tools, Jenkins and SonarCube, that are required to make this CI/CD pipeline work? This um, feature of allowing uh, uh, code coverage to be pushed into Sonar uh, was introduced in January. So you have to at least have the January release of the CompuR tools. Roland, thank you. Stephen, thank you. It's 11.59 and I try to be aware of everybody's time, so I'm going to wrap it up now. I want to thank you all for attending. Uh, Janet will be sending out links to the video, to the PowerPoint, 
Um, I would recommend to all of you reach out to your AC, reach out to your TAM. Um, you know, we are more than willing to come do demos on site and share, you know, our passion about this topic. So thank you all so much for your time today and have a great day.